How goes it, y'all? So um, today I want to discuss a topic that I've been kind of wanting to, to riff on for a while. And it comes from uh, a trip that uh, I made with my wife and my son to Italy uh, last fall. So today is uh, April 3rd, 2023, and it was, it was late September, early October, I believe it was, when uh, my, my wife, my son, and I went to, to Italy on a, on a pilgrimage with a group uh, from our diocese. And, and so I, one, one of my very good friends is Italian, and uh, so I don't mean any of this against him in particular, but, but one of the first things that I noticed as soon as we got, uh, like, landed in Rome and got out of the airport, we, we hopped on, a, on like, a, a charter bus and, and started on our way. But one of, the, one of the first things I noticed was, like, how everything was falling apart. All of the infrastructure was just completely falling apart. And I, I work in the construction industry you know, bro broadly speaking, I'm a, a, a land surveyor for the Indiana Department of Transportation. So, so I'm, I'm fairly tuned in to infrastructure problems with roads and bridges and clean, having a clean right of way, you know, that, that, that portion of the, uh, of the road, um, where like all the water drains off and everything, the, the ditches and everything, you know, if, if you have a clean, uh, a clean road and roadways, um, it shows a lot about your community. For example, or, or you know, even if you just have well-maintained roads, um, for example, you know, I, I live in Indiana, and as soon as you go north into the, you cross the border into Michigan, uh, the roads get drastically worse. Um, it's, it's, it's immediate, really. It's quite hilarious. There's just potholes everywhere. You know, if you're taking the interstate up into Michigan, like in Indiana, the interstate has lots of reflect, like lots of reflectors and reflective paint and things like that, so that you can see where all the lines are on the road. But then, as soon as you get to Michigan, all those disappear. And particularly if you're in inclement weather, like snow or rain at night, um, it can be really hard to see where the lines are on the road. So anyway, um, we get to we get to Italy, and the first thing I notice is that the infrastructure is just falling apart. There, there's not just the public infrastructure, private homes are just abandoned and they're, they're decrepit, like, and, uh, and there's just trash everywhere. Like Ro Rome in particular is, is kind of a gross city, to be honest, um, by, at least by American standards. And, and so like, it, it was a, it was a bit of culture shock. And I began kind of questioning, like, why in the world is it like this? Is it just cause they're, are they just lazy in Italy? Um, and, and I don't think that's true because individual, everyone is very well groomed. Like it, it's, uh, our tour guide said at one point that, that Italy is, uh, it, or it feels like a third world country where everyone wears Gucci. Okay. So like it, everything around you feels like it's falling apart and like a third world country, but all of the people that you see, they're, they're quite well off generally. Um, you know, minus like the gypsies and, and, you know, the, the, of course the population of homeless that is in every society. Right. Cause, cause really Italy is a first world country, but, um, but if you, if you didn't see any people, I think, and you just looked at the buildings and the roads and things, you would realize you, you wouldn't think you were in a first world country. So, and, and as we went on our trip, I realized something and it was that you also never saw any children anywhere. And the explanation to that is that Italy has one of the fastest declining populations in the world. It's, they've had a declining birth rate to, which now is almost non-existent, um, for the last 50 years, 60 years or so, you know, and out of the kind of first world countries, Italy, to my knowledge, has one of the lowest population for its size, um, and also for, like, compared to its historic population. Okay, now, I'm not going to be able to cite to you, I'm not going to be able to cite to you st statistics, but it, it honestly was just apparent being there um, that, that, you know, not only was the infrastructure falling apart, but that the reason be, the reason everything was falling apart was because they, they literally just don't have enough people 
to take care of everything and to, you know, pay enough taxes for people to work. And then they don't even have enough people to work. Right. So it was it was definitely shocking. And and when I got home, you know, back to the States, that was one of, to be honest, one of the things that uh, kind of shook me the most was, you know, looking at our present situation in America, our population has been on the decline for, you know, a good 20, 30 years, not nearly as long as Italy's has been. But, you know, it's, it's utterly apparent that people are not having children in the United States. And largely, I think that is due to a lot of uh, change in philosophy where we see children as burdens instead of as, um, you know, you know, the opposite would be a commodity, right? Um, which isn't an entirely bad thing or, or untrue thing, right? Children can be a commodity, especially if you live in an agrarian society, things like that. Um, but even if you, you know, let's say you own your own business, uh, your children can very well be a commodity because they can be a trusted resource for you to pass that business onto in the future, or they can be uh, employee for you, um, you know, where you have a pretty easy, easy, your children can have pretty easy employment and you can have pretty um, well acquired and trusted employees. Okay, right. So, you know, th there can be a lot of benefits to having a lot of children. Uh, but over the last 60 years, particularly the overpopulation narrative has been pushed. And you know, d despite whether it's actually real or not, okay, and, and I don't, I, I think it's blown way, way out of proportion, uh, the reality of overpopulation. You know, it, it is, it is true just uh, that the, the population of the world, of, of humanity in the world, has exponentially increased over the last hundred years, um, 150 years, maybe you could say. But, but does that mean that we are going to run out of room anytime soon or that we're going to have societal collapse because of running out of room. That is where I, I, I don't really see a very good evidence for it. And also anybody that's still blowing that trumpet of overpopulation, you know, at least on a general scale, like, like, oh, the world's overpopulated. So all the people in the West need to stop having kids. That is, uh, that seems to me to be an utterly false narrative right now. Now, it may be true that countries like um, India um, and certain countries in Africa, right, are having many, many children. And there is a bit of a problem in those areas. I, I can think of India in particular, where people are kind of running out of room and, and things like that. But that's a local problem to a specific country or a specific number of countries. But it's not a global problem necessary. Um, and it actually seems quite apparent that it's not a global problem. I mean, virtually all of the West, um, and I would even throw in Russia in that, right? Um, and China. China's population is, isn't going to just fall off here, or it is currently falling off because of their one child policy that they had for so many years. You know, and I think people just, they don't think about the math very much. Like, let's take the one child policy in China, for example. Now, they, they, they achieved their goal. They uh, halted their overpopulation because it basically took two generations of the one child policy. And now they're having huge issues because, you know, mainly they have too many males uh, in relation to the amount of females that they have. And so there are um, there are a lot of guys in Chinese and, and I've heard also Japanese society where where they can't find mates. They can't find women to to marry um, and to have children with because there literally aren't enough women. China for so long has favored boys over girls. And so with modern technology and, and, and medical technology, you know, you can basically tell what gender you're having, right? Um, and because of the, the very unfortunate reality of abortion, you could uh, choose to abort a baby just because of the gender that they are. Um, and that, uh, seems to apparently have been have had happened in china over the last 30 40 years so they're in this kind of an issue it's not it's not just a population issue it's also a demographical issue okay and that's you know it shouldn't be taken lightly because think about this like society what is the point of society it's for the greater it's, it's for the benefit of the individual and and what is the greatest benefit to the individual but the the benefit of society as a whole if society as a whole is working well and you have 
a, a, a good proportion of demographics and you also have a good population for the amount of land that you, you, you uh, have in your country, then those are pretty basic things. And, you know, looking at those two factors alone, you would have, you know, you could have a pretty good, um, you could check those boxes, let's say, and have a pretty decent life. <laughs> at least as regards those two factors. Okay, there's so many more factors that can make your life horrible, but whatever. So it, it might seem like I'm, I'm kind of rambling here and I'm, I'm kind of losing my, my train of thought, but it's kind of, I'm thinking on the fly here and, and I, I, want, I want people to think about this issue more. The issue of not overpopulation, but underpopulation, particularly in the West or, or really anywhere outside of in, in second world and first world countries, okay, I guess you could say, is where, is where virtually this, this, this problem is virtually going to happen and is happening. All right? and, and Italy was kind of a, a, a foreshadowing, I think, for me, of what the United States, what could happen in the United States over the next 50 years, over the course of my lifetime, is that we will see a dramatic drop-off of population. We're, we're just rounding the curve right now. A couple weeks ago, I was looking at the population charts, and, and it's just, it's like flattening out now. And what's going to happen after that flattening out? Well, it's just going to drop off like a cliff. How do I know that? Because people are not having children. Like, our, our birth rate is barely keeping up with the, with the uh, what do you call it, like the retention rate. Like, two, two kids per two parents is... The, the replacement rate, that's what I'm looking for. So if your average amount of births is less than two, which in the United States, I think it's 1.8 or 1.9, then you are not at replacement rate, and thus you are having a decrease in population. Okay, now that's not true everywhere um, in the United States, but as a whole, that is true. That is at least what the statistics, the way they read. And I think people, they're, they're, they're not preparing for this decrease in population. So let's think about it. What would happen if over the next 30 to 50 years, our population is basically, you know, cut in half or, you know, best case scenario, it's 25% less. What, what does that look like for us as a society? Well, we've built our infrastructure for 350 million people in the United States, something like that. And, and we're still building and expanding it because our population is still technically growing, right? Although it's, it's leveling off. But I, we are not preparing for a drop-off. We're not preparing for the drop-off. And I, I think I, I've never heard anybody talk about this. Uh, and maybe that's just because I, I don't listen to the news much and maybe I'm burying my head in the sand. But I, I, don't, hear, I don't hear anybody talking about this. That practically speaking, what are we going to do if our population decreases by 25% to 50% over the next 30 to 50 years. Like, again, we've, we built this infrastructure for 350 million people. What happens if we only have 250 million people in the next 30 years? What happens? Like, are we going to be able to take care of and maintenance all the roads and the traffic lights and the, the drainage ditches and the, you know, not, not to mention the amount of houses that we've built like in areas it's it's gonna it's very possible that the whole united states will look like detroit eventually before my lifetime is over like we'll have or it'll look like italy <laughs> like we'll have tons of buildings everywhere but they're all going to be vacant because there's not enough population there's not enough people to fill them because for the past three generations we have not even hit replacement rate you know and it, it really is pretty amazing it's pretty amazing, I think, that people are not waking up to this problem. That they're not, they're not preparing for it, I think. And n nobody has the foresight enough right now, as far as I can tell, to say, hey, um, read the writing on the wall. Like, it, it's going to happen. It is going to happen. I'm not, this isn't, this is just math. <laughs> That's all it is. This is just math. There's going to be a decrease in population, a pretty major one. And I can, I can say that with confidence. And mainly because, like, so I live in the Midwest. I live in Indiana. Generally a pretty conservative area. But even the conservative people here, you know, no, nobody has large families. I mean, 
five kids is is like really rare nowadays. Not to mention seven to ten. Okay, that that's I mean impossible basically to find. Like proportionally speaking. All right. Now we are seeing a lot of a lot of change in that direction within very small pockets. You know, I think there's there's a certain amount of uh, or a certain group of Catholics um, and and evangelicals who are beginning to kind of wake up and be like, hey, you know what? Uh, having kids isn't such a bad thing. We're we're not gonna be overpopulated, and you know it, it it's not such a bad thing right now. We're actually gonna be really really struggling in the next number of years uh, because we're not gonna have enough people. Okay. And it's not just that. It's not just like the the hard math and statistics about it. What it what it is uh, at base is is really understanding like every individual human being is valued and loved. And even if a human being comes into existence in unideal circumstances, let's say rape or incest, something like that, does that mean that that person should not have been born or should not exist? Does it? I would say no. And I think if, you, if, if one is to say otherwise, there are an incredible amount of implications to that view that uh, one wouldn't really want to take on. Okay, let's say, for, exa for, for example, if I say that you should not have been born because you were a child of, of rape, like, like, as soon as you put it into the, the, the personal, on the personal level, and you're not thinking about it in the abstract way, like, holy crap. That's a horrible thing to say. Like, it just, it just is. I have a, a friend, I guess you could say, who has 10 children, I believe, and she was walking through the supermarket, and a lady came up to her and said, are these all your kids? She was, she was like, oh. but, but it, it, was, it was kind of in a snarky way, you know, like, basically, like, who would have that many kids? And then started asking her, like, why, why would you have many kids like uh, blah 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 the, pop the population overpopulation all this kind of stuff and uh, my friend just looked at this lady and said okay which one of my kids would you have die right now Wh which one of, one of my kids would you have me kill right now uh, to solve your problem okay because the, I think it's Jordan Peterson who says this there's nothing more implicitly genocidal than the idea of overpopulation limiting I guess it's it's not overpopulation in itself, but it's it's what we do about it. There is nothing more implicitly genocidal than saying that there are too many people on the earth. That that's kind of what he says. There's nothing more implicitly genocidal than saying there are too many people on the face of the earth. Do you really want to deal with the consequences of such a claim that there are too many people on the earth? What are we going to do? Ship them off into space and let them freeze and die? What are we going to do? Dig mass graves and kill them all in them? I mean, my goodness. Or are we just going to, over generations, abort our children out of existence to curb this problem? And we're going to sterilize people and promote sterilization. I mean, basically, that's that is, that is precisely what's happened. Sterilization, nobody even blinks an eye anymore. Most Christians don't blink an eye. I'm going to go get my tubes tied tomorrow. I'm going to, like, you know, get a vasectomy tomorrow. Nobody even bats an eye anymore. They, they even applaud you. That's a great thing, right? They applaud you for that. Oh, you're doing such a good for you, for the world. By what? Doing the equivalent, equivalent of chopping off your hand? That really is what's going on. And then now, of course, you have the transgender movement and all that kind of fun stuff. I mean, that's a whole other whole other topic that I've talked about it fairly extensively at this point. But... Even if there were too many people on the planet, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Like, is it somehow that we are a scourge to reality? Like, humanity is bad and so we have to get rid of it? Or should we be thinking more, like, let's say, for instance, overpopulation is actually occurring. Instead of trying to limit the amount of humans who come into existence, should we not be trying to, like, think outside the box? You know, maybe look, you know, in, in an extreme position, look elsewhere to other planets, potentially, you know, put our energies towards that instead of aborting each other out of existence or um, sterilizing each other out of existence. Like, or should we think of 
better ways to do this whole housing thing and living thing and uh, food production thing. Now, of course, as I'm saying, this, this is only if overpopulation is actually happening. And I think the, the numbers are pretty clear that worldwide overpopulation is not happening. It might have seemed that way at one point, but we've, we've basically taken care of that ourselves by aborting ourselves out of, out of existence and sterilizing ourselves. So, you know, it may still be occurring in certain places in Africa and in India, but as far as I know, nowhere else in the world is, is, is there really a population boom. It's not. And I'm sure as those places become more and more westernized, for lack of a better term, um, because America and, and the Western world is, is clearly an empire uh, trying to turn everything else into itself. I mean, I, I don't mean that tongue-in-cheek. I mean that for real. That is what it is. If you think America and the West is not an empire, uh, you're kidding yourself. So, and, and that it's not seeking to, like, make everything in its own image. Okay. Not that that's a bad thing. There's a lot of really great things about the Western world. But, um, but I don't think we can deny the fact that, that the West is imperial. So, yeah, I, I, I guess... I'm kind of trying by this episode to be the boy who cried wolf. Um, and hopefully I don't end up, you know, hopefully the end of that story isn't the same with me where it's all just, I'm just crying nonsense or, or what is it? The, the, the chicken who, the chicken little, you know, right? Chicken little. So, but I really don't, I don't think it is that same issue because the thing about depopulation, it, it, I, I think it is different than over, than, than the, the people forecasting who used to forecast overpopulation. Depopulation, I'm not saying like this is going to happen in the future. I'm saying it already has happened and we're just going to see the effects of it in the future. Okay. Like we have had less and less children in the West for the past three generations. So what's going to happen if we continue on that trend and, and even if we don't continue on that trend, we're still going to feel the effects of it. We're going to have a little bit of a lull. Okay. Where, where the population dips quite a bit but like that's already written in stone there's really no stopping it at this point um there we can mitigate it but there's no stopping it i guess that's kind of just that's kind of what i'm getting at anyway it's it's an interesting topic and i, I think i wish more people would think about it like especially preparing for it i think is really my main spiel here is preparing for depopulation underpopulation we need to prepare for it we need to particularly prepare our infrastructure for it or else, you know, our country is going to look, it's going to look like Detroit everywhere or it's going to look like Italy everywhere in the next 50 years. And maybe that's not the worst thing ever, but I think we, we still shouldn't be caught unawares about it. All right. We, we, we should be prepared for it. Basically all that I'm saying. So anyway, I, I apologize for this episode being kind of a, a ramble and a, a rant and things like that, but but hopefully I got my point across. Maybe some of you thought felt that this was entertaining. Probably I will get a lot of comments about people saying like, oh, Parker, you don't understand the science and all that kind of stuff, and that's fine. I'm, I'm not really attempting to understand the science per se, the, the nitty-gritty of the science. I'm just trying to look at the overall picture and claim what I think is going to happen. So that's pretty much it. All right. Just some housekeeping things. Please uh, subscribe, like my videos, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. Subscribe to me on YouTube if you haven't already. I know I have a, a fairly large contingent of people uh, listening to the podcast. If you listen to the podcast, please subscribe for me uh, to me on YouTube. Subscribe to Catholicism in the Car on YouTube um, because that, that really, really helps a lot in getting the YouTube algorithm to kind of start pushing out my content to people. Um, right now, my content is pretty much... it. it the vast majority of my views come from my own self-promotion on Facebook and other things. So um, I'm really not getting any help otherwise. So, and then you can also look at, if you want to support me monetarily, um, I have all that on my, my website uh, on the support page. Go to catholicisminthecar.com. God bless.